So look at these fine gentlemen. They are officially called co-host. I want to ask you, Christoph Ostermann, um, what do you think about Eco Summit? What is your experience during the last two days? What can you tell us? What kind of ideas for improvement can you give us? Okay. Um, well, I, from my point of view, overall, it was really great. The first thing is the obvious one, setting the obvious here. It was great to see everybody again in person because I'm really sick of these video conferences. <laughs> and uh, this was perfect. The venue, yeah. excellent. And I don't have the slightest clue how you're doing that. The weather was perfect, and it always is at the Eco Summits. You must have a special connection. Huh? So I have Angel on my ticket. Maybe you are the Angel. <laughs> the weather was great. So um, uh, from my point of view, it was really perfect. Lots of space, lots of time for networking. And um, I had lots of cool and interesting conversations. So from my point of view, it was a perfect, a perfect event. Did you find a new investment opportunity for yourself here? Who that knows? you didn't consider before? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe sounds quite promising, doesn't maybe it? Maybe sounds promising. <laughs> and, I mean, maybe I have to sleep it over, but I have a couple of ideas. Okay. Least. All right, but what do you want to tell us? I'm not going to repeat um, uh, everything that Chris That's already a smart said. Idea. So, um, <laughs> it is, uh, but it was super nice to actually be able to touch some of you people, you know, again since a long time, and uh, some people that we that we met new. Um, I also think that the quality of the companies uh, was very, very, very good. Um, so it's, uh, and as you know, I'm always um, uh, a bit worried about having too many you know, software, business model companies, and they were there, of course, but, uh, and that's okay, because that's part of it, but there was a, a good portion of uh, solid technology, which actually we're going to need to, uh, to, to make a difference uh, altogether. So I, I truly enjoyed it. And uh, maybe the last point is, I think that the wine selection was uh, fantastic, Jan. So you yeah. did a really, really good job. Yeah. And uh, did you find a new investment opportunity here, Bart? I, I, I may have found the same one as Christoph has found. Uh, the the same one? What is the discussion? I, we're having a discussion. Join it if you join. We, we, may, we may end up in, uh, in the... Uh, in the there. cap table together? Who knows? Is there room for me? Of course, always. <laughs> <laughs> always. Gerard, what do you want to tell us? I bought Ethereum and Bitcoin yesterday because the price went down. That's what I did yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not a good thing for the climate, right? I mean, don't speak to us. Do you want, do you want, should I tell everyone about the Aston Martin you drive or not? <laughs> I, I didn't you. say that. Sorry, sorry, I sorry. sorry. Gonna, yeah, yeah. I knew you were going to go there. We all have electric cars here except somebody sitting beside me. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> I, I, uh, I used to have a Tesla. <laughs> so it was great. I mean, brilliant just to go out and meet people again. Um, Louis Ferdinand is in my team there. I haven't seen him in a year and a half. And you speak to someone and see them in a Zoom call every day, and then you sort of realize, I actually haven't seen him in a year and a half. This is mad. So that was really great to see people. And I think that one conclusion I have is, it's all about the end of the value chain. And uh, what I mean by that is, I don't care if it's Germany, the UK, the Nordics, getting your hands on an electrician, a plumber, you can't get them. And I, I, have a, I bought an old church some years ago that I'm converting into a, a, into a home. It's not finished. Uh, do you think I can get someone to do my heating system? I can't. They all go, oh, that's too complicated. I don't have anything to do with this, and, and, and. And I end up heating with infrared heating, which is very expensive. And I have you know, stoves where I'm cutting wood and burning wood, right? Not perfect, but as I said, can't get people. So that. I mean, I'm thinking an awful lot about that. I think there's real huge opportunities. How to deliver to... all these technologies yeah, to the, the, the last, As Philip said yesterday, the last mile. It's all about the last mile. Uh, if we sort that out, then I think actually we will sort out climate change. Yeah. Again, what Philip said yesterday, it is the big hurdle. The money's there, mm. the technology's there. What's not there is the last mile. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it actually a good time to found a new startup company? Because I have listened to so many investors, and they are all eager to invest. I think it's not anymore a question of shortage of capital. It's rather the other way around, shortage of really great startups that have to big, uh, the potential to become really, really big. What do you think, Christoph? Well, I 
um, as already expressed yesterday, I think that this is only the beginning. What we see here is a massive flooding of the marketplace with, with money, tons of money, which is good news, um, simply driven by, by ESG. And um, uh, yes, I think there's not enough there's not enough targets for that, yeah? So um, this will mean a price increase. So this will mean that also venture capital companies will get under pressure if they don't differentiate themselves and provide also value to the startup companies. This will mean really massive increase in, in competition. And I think for all entrepreneurs, this is good news because there are enough challenges left, yeah? Don't get me wrong, but I think the challenge of getting financing for a good idea um, uh, is at least significantly decreased. So I think it's a good time and um, I can only encourage um, guys to found a company. Um, the time is better than ever before from my point of view. Still, it's work and it's risk and it's not a walk in the park. And if you look into your own future, Christoph, do you see a man running a new company or do you see a man running a fucking big fund? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's <laughs> that's um, uh, indeed a great question. To be honest, I, I don't know it yet. I think uh, at the moment, I mean, what I do at the moment is I contribute to the ecosystem by investing money. But again, this is not the bottleneck. So what I think is, is way more crucial is I try to share my experience. I'm around since 20 years in the clean tech space. Um, uh, I'm around as an entrepreneur since uh, then. I have a lot of scars as well, yeah. And um, uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, I think it. What I can contribute is at least um, uh, that. If I will start my own business once again, can be. Not sure, you know. Um, uh, I think I deserve a little break. Zonan was a very interesting experience. It was enjoyable. It was lots of fun, but it was also. Um, uh, exhausting a little bit, yeah. And yeah. I have a lot of respect um, taking over again an operational role as a CEO. It is, I don't know, maybe I'm... It's tiring, uh, right? It, I mean, I'm not so <laughs> sure if this is the next phase in my life is, is suitable for such a challenge once again. Maybe I can contribute even more efficiently with a bigger impact um, by doing what I do today, but I don't exclude it. It can be. And To be honest, I think about that from time to time already. And maybe I'm really a serial killer yeah, and um, I'm doing it again. I don't know. Okay, we will find out. And Bart, how do you plan to maximize your own impact in the next years until 2030? What is your own strategy to make the best use of your resources, your time, your capital, your network, your, your ideas and your experience? Um, I actually just intend to continue what I've been doing for the past, it's actually almost seven years since I left Wellington. And uh, so getting involved in companies, uh, very hands-on, as you know. Um, so I, I'm not like, you know, uh, the, the passive chairman that, you know, talks to the CEO once every two weeks or so. It's actually a lot more intensive than that and uh, try to contribute. And I simply love it. I mean, I, I, I don't consider it work, frankly. I. Um, I'm, I'm, I consider it a hobby, it's, and it's, uh, it's fantastic if you can make your hobby, uh, you know, your, your work. I'm not super monetary driven anymore, right? Like it's not necessary, and uh, that's, that's another great um, uh, part of the equation. So I intend to continue to do what I do. Uh, and the one comment I would make on the, uh, on the market, uh, maybe also as a, an input for the entrepreneurs here, is that I think we are in a, in a confluence of, of two factors here. One is indeed, ESG uh, investing, uh, climate change, um, uh, and, and a lot of money going in there. But we, of course, also have the uh, capital markets at a, at a very, very favorable uh, moment because of all the uh, quantitative easing and all the money that's been pushed in because of Corona. Um, that second factor is gonna go away. And so that uh, I do believe that this sector is not going to be hurt as bad as other things, but my advice to uh, the entrepreneurs is uh, load up on cash now. Um, let me put it differently. Um, every single one of my companies uh, that I'm involved with is loading up on uh, cash in a significant way, uh, as they can, uh, because I'm, uh, you know, take the money when you can, and I think you all can take money in today. And I don't know, you're the, you're the, oh, bank, you're the banker here. Uh, so. so I go along with that. I'd say there's a very simple saying in the investment banking world, use the capital markets before the capital markets abuses you. And we're in a situation right today where there's huge hype, huge valuations, 
So now is the time to raise capital, right? Yeah. Don't wait, right? If you wait, we yeah. just don't know what's going to happen. Um, to optimize valuation and then half the market crashes, right? Yeah. And, and, uh, and we've been through this. Listen, we've been through, if you remember, we've been through the whole so solar totally. boom and bust 15 years ago. Well, yeah. And if I look at some of the valuations in the battery and the fuel cell space, it reminds me of batteries 15 years ago, really. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other reflection I say from actually some of the presentations we talked about it earlier, what we saw is we're looking at some technologies that were around 10 years ago and it's suddenly they've been taken out of the cupboard and they're being redusted again. Um, and I would say to those technologies, make sure you get capital in quickly yeah. uh, and also get to scale quickly as well, right? I think the one thing that I would say, which is different than go back to the solar boom and bust, the solar boom was based on subsidies. Now we've got these technologies making economic sense. And that's the big change, right? Some of them. Some of them, some of them, some of them, some of them. Some of them. I have a final idea and question to you. What do you think about the idea of doing an eco-summit spec where we do an IPO, we raise a lot of money, and we acquire a really cool target and we make it really, really, really big globally. What do you think about this idea? I, I, I'm going to go out as a financial analyst. If I may say, as a former uh, equity analyst, I'm short all the SPACs. I'm making so much money buying short, and just those of you who don't understand what that means is I'm betting that the share price goes down. I mean, there's just the hype valuations in these areas. It's just crazy. So I'd be very careful about SPACs. That's what I would say. If I was... If I was the CEO of a business and I was looking to go on the stock market today, I'd go the IPO route. Why should I give 10, 15% of my company away to a so-called sponsor and you're locked in for a year at a so-called high valuation, but actually the share prices of all the SPACs are going down because, you know, they're, they're sort of hidden they value. So I would say if that's the challenge, then let's go and do a, a huge big IPO. Do what QSales did, you know, 15 years ago, where they were nearly on the DAX with a 9 billion market cap at one point in time. Yeah. You were chairman. That's what we do. Do something like that, right? Mm. I, I was actually not the chairman of QSOS. So you're, right, you're right, you're right. Christian, right back. My partner. My partner. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Bart, what do you just think for the about record. the idea of doing a spec, independent whether it's an Eco Summit spec or anybody else? What do you think about this in, approach in all, to the market? So, so, well, so uh, first of all, I. I I completely agree that I think it, uh, and, and in fact, in one of my companies, we were very close to doing a spec um, and actually executing on it uh, in uh, April, May timeframe. And we actually pulled the, the plug on it when the uh, SEC started uh, to put out notices that they had a different view about the safe harbor uh, statements on or the safe harbor clauses on forward looking statements. And so we said, you know, I'm chairing that company and the CEO and myself, we said, well, listen, I mean, it's great to make some money, but we're not going to go to jail for it, right? So let's, let's not go there. So I'm very skeptical on, uh, on specs overall. The other thing for me is that, I mean, I actually really enjoy being involved and doing what I do because of, you know, building companies, building yeah. teams, you know, uh, building strategies, building partnerships. That's fun to, you know, do a spec from the spec side. And it's all freaking financial market stuff, you know, and it, I, I, <laughs> as you were, as you were giving me a little level on the side. So I, if I would have enjoyed that, I would have become a banker. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I, it's, it's not, it's not for me, this back thing. IPOs with a company um, to get access to public markets, you know, at what the market sees a reasonable valuation. I think it's a great way to raise yeah. capital. It's a great mm -hmm. way to, you know, create long-term financial viability for a company, I mm -hmm. think. So yes, SPACs, um, it's, it's mm. uh, yeah, a uh, uh, strange instrument. What do you think, Christoph, about SPACs? Well, I also, also think that this is due to the currently <coughs> overhyped uh, situation that we see so many um, uh, SPACs. On the other hand, I don't believe that there's anything wrong with it. It just adds a further instrument yeah, to companies to finance themselves. <laughs> To make an IPO maybe easier and faster is on the traditional track. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think is, there's nothing wrong. And if a company believes that this is the right way for them, why not? It's an additional instrument which was not so present years ago. Maybe I would have thought about this, uh, this as well um, uh, at Zonen. Maybe did, not. I mean, did why you not? think about IPOs huh? a lot when during your time at Zonen? Yeah, we thought about that. Yes, absolutely. 
Would you enjoy running a public company as a CEO, doing quarterly reports? Um, I think this. I mean, personally, I think this is not my cup of tea. I think it, is, it makes more sense to run a company in a. I, it depends on the maturity and on the stage of the company. When I remember Sonnen with volatility, yeah, still in a very narrow market, with um, difficulties predicting more or less precisely quarterly results for the next let's say six, eight quarters. I have doubts if this is the right thing, especially for, for me personally, I, I don't think so. But it, I think it always depends on the situation, also on the maturity of a company and on the, the specific market environment, mm. if this is a good or a bad thing. Yeah? And also uh, capital requirements and everything. Because, I mean, we didn't talk so much about it, but clearly we need more IPOs to happen in Europe as a way yeah. to open it up to the retail investors, yeah. these uh, new technology stories I, I that agree. we have been hearing about during the last Absolutely. two days, right? And also, I, th I think we need to create, uh, in this space, we need to create a bigger base of companies that become really big. And of course, if we oh. end up uh, selling the companies to strategics, those couple of strategics in the space will become bigger, but we're not actually creating a bigger base. And I think that's what we should be doing. So I do believe that uh, going to public markets with some of these companies and then scale them, really scale them, is a good thing, right? Um, no. And Gerard, you are pretty big into hydrogen in terms of your research and your thinking. Do you think Sunfire is going to do a nice hydrogen oh, IPO maybe. during the next Absolutely. couple of years? There's no doubt about it. I mean, listen, they're going to do a plus 100 million raise, which will be announced in the next few weeks. You've got big financial institutions going in there. New capital, capital that's not in the room here coming into them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hydrogen is only beginning. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 as I said, very exciting times, the whole, mm. yeah. the whole market uh, in front of us. This is actually the reason why you're all wearing um, a NASDAQ badge, yeah? the stock market in order to remind you and motivate you to do more IPOs. Okay, I think IPO is a good uh, final word for EcoSummit closing panel. I want to thank Gerard Reed, Bart Markus, Christoph Ostermann, and myself. And now it's time for another big party. Thank you very much uh, for being thank part you. of Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> Thanks for organizing a great conference. So when you get my okay. electric, let's... Awesome. Uh